Eli with the Evolve Academy here and in this video series I'm going to break down Panasonic's Geometry Manager Pro software and give you a step-by-step -step guide and a walkthrough of its functionality and some tips and tricks along the way. First you need to make sure you have the latest version of Geometry Manager Pro installed. You may not know this but most of their updates aren't for feature upgrades, they are for projector profiles. So if you are trying to connect to a projector and it cannot be found, it may not be a network issue, it could be a software issue. If you don't have the most up-to-date software, potentially you won't have the profiles for that projector, which means it won't be able to detect it on the network. Seen here is the initial Geometry Manager Pro connection tab. You have the IP address you'd like to connect to. If you check this end address, you can specify an entire range of projectors they would like to connect to. I would not change the port. Your username and password always need to be done in order to authenticate. If you type anything wrong, when the next search box pops up, it'll give you a notification that your authentication failed. It will still find the projectors, but it will not connect. You can load from a file, from a previously saved project file, which will load up all of the projectors, and it will not have to authenticate because you authenticated as part of creating this file. For this series, we're going to work in the simulator or simulation or service mode for the Geometry, Geometry Manager Pro software. So if you go to Option, you can see your version. I'm currently working in 5.3.18. If you click on service password and type in 1565-1565, you now have an offline option. You can select the projector you want to work with. I'm going to do an RQ22, two of them in fact, and give them a virtual input of 12G. And I'm going to connect. No authentication needs to be done because these are not real projectors, so there is no security. This is all virtual. As you can see here, I have my software open. One of the things I want to show you, and I'm going to do for this video, is the software scales with your graphics rendering. So if we change the scale from 100 to 125%, you can see everything zooms in, gets a little easier to see. This will make this video easier for us. And if you have a small computer screen um, or 4K, a lot of times it will default to very tiny text and buttons. So you can scale that up for the duration of the usage of the software. So this is the main software. And I'm going to break these videos down for each tab. This is the connection video. So let's talk about our toolbars at the top and then our universal area down here on the left. Under file, we have all of our save file and open file options. You can save a single projector or you can save all of your projectors. These are different file types. If you save a single projector, it's a .prj. If you save all of your projectors, it's a .prjs file. The big difference is, is think of the saving all your projectors as an export. It truly does save the whole state of all of the projectors and it can reload them all at the same time. This is a very slow process. The software is not able to communicate with each projector simultaneously. So when you save or load all projectors, it needs to reach out and save each aspect of each projector individually. So it takes a good amount of time. Same thing with loading that file for all projectors. It's going to take two to five minutes. It really depends on what features and how many projectors you have. Now when you save file one projector, it only saves that specific projector um, and you can load that file to that projector or you can load that file to any other projector as long as it's the same model. Another cool feature is you can reload a tab. 
So for example, if I'm working on my lens settings, let's try geometry. Well, I don't have a file saved, but typically this icon is lit up and that's open file current tab. So if you click that, what it's going to do is look into that projector file, just the one projector file, and only grab the lens setting options or portion of the file and load them. It will not overwrite any of your other tabs or features in the projector, just the lens settings. So if you're working with multiple projectors and one has color matching or brightness control or masking that you want to import, you can go into that other projector, the second projector, and you can load just the masking to that projector and it won't affect everything else. So what I recommend is saving all of your projectors one at a time because it makes it easier to do backups and it makes it easier to transfer information. But once your whole show is done, your show ready, save a file with all of your projectors. It's a good backup. You can also save a file for just your connection. What this does is saves the connection information for your projectors. So it lets you reconnect to them quickly without having to authenticate or anything else, but the rest of the information is defaulted. You would have to load that manually as you go along or pull it from the projector. Activation. All of the Panasonic, all of the newer Panasonic projectors come with the Geometry Manager Pro in them. And you get 60 to 75% functionality even if it's not activated. You can still point warp. You get 11 points by 11 points. You can still do um, blanking. You can do some masking, but not custom masking. You can do advanced warping, but not rotation and some other features. So yes, they give you everything, but it's slightly limited. You can always check. You can always export your profile. You can activate your license and you can check the status of your activation. You can export a configuration of this software to be used in their multi-monitoring software. You can also set up a key configure and then change the binding of keys. This right here is what you're seeing for a um, Sony PlayStation remote control or game controller that can be used to control the warping. Under edit, you have some basic options, undo and redo. I believe you can undo and redo up to 15 steps. The rest of this are all options that are also available in your main GUI. Same thing with the view. Most of this is available in your main GUI. Other than the layout window, actually, yes, the layout window is right here. And what the layout window allows you to do is change the layout of your projectors. That way you can easily navigate between them in your warping and uniformity tabs. Tools, you have command control where you can input text commands and then save preset um, text functions. If you have the auto screen adjustment plugin, you have that, that option here, which is also the same option here plugin is required. I don't have it on here, but I will be doing a video covering in depth that plugin as well. And then of course our version. So that's our tool menu. Like I said, everything in the tool menu is also available as an icon or somewhere in the GUI. So this breaks down as your operations window. Everything here on the right hand side is projector specific. Depends on which projector is chosen. Everything on the left is universal. And what's neat is I can select two projectors. Everything on the right hand side is grayed out, but everything on the left, I can do as a function to all of the projectors. I can power them all on. I can shutter them. It's not a sync shutter. Remember, this software cannot send simultaneous commands. So it'd have to shutter each one individually one at a time. So it would work essentially as a cascade. I can apply test patterns across all the projectors, change the image, also change the grid resolution for our warp, and then turn on auto transfer. 
So all of your projectors are in this first menu. You can see the IP address of the connection. You can move them up or down the order. You can change the projector name. Let's do that real quick for both of these. There we go, a stage left and a stage right. And then we can add more projectors as well. One of the things I've seen often Thompson show site is if you have your company's projectors and rental projectors or just multiple companies doing video on the same show, all of the username and passwords, the authentications may not be the same. So when you do your opening dialog box and search for projectors, only certain ones will authenticate, the other ones will fail. So when you connect, you have say eight out of 16 projectors available. So what you need to do then is you add, and when you click add projector, it brings back up your dialog box again to search for projectors anew. So what you do is you search for projectors again, but you change the username and password for the ones that you haven't acquired and then it will find and acquire those and add them to the list. So when you're dealing with different projectors that have different authentications, that's how you do it. You add them in groups or individually this way. If you have the status displayed on the projector, it'll show up on screen and you can tab through the menu because there's something like 12 status pages that you can look through. Very good for quickly checking a signal or an input, warp status, temperature, and error codes, things of that nature. Display the cursor. All of this is essentially for your geometry section, and we'll cover that shortly. Transfer. Your auto transfer should always be on. Yes, you might find times to have it off, and you'll know when, but if auto transfer is off, as you make changes, nothing is sent to the projector you have to manually transfer it. If auto transfer is on, this acts as a real-time software that connects controls and things happen as you click and do them. So from here, let's jump over to our first tab, our lens settings.